Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Nancy Che Mahan. Um, today is April 28, 2020. Today I will be presenting um, a mathematical perspective of COVID-19. I'm going to try my best to not include my interpretations or opinions about the data. Um, I would just want to present um, a, a, a factual look and an understanding of um, what mortality rates and or fortality rates, um, how they're derived and what the numerator and the denominator means. And therefore, when we look at numbers coming out every single day, um, how that can affect our response to it. So I hope you enjoy this presentation and hang on tight. I am a college math professor. Um, I have a bachelor's in, and master's in applied mathematics and a doctorate in educational leadership. So in this presentation, I will be presenting um, a mathematical perspective of the coronavirus 19. Um, I know that there's a lot of um, information that's out there, and um, I would say a lot of interpretation and opinions about it. Um, so I wanted to just present a mathematical perspective that doesn't have interpretations in it. Um, I'll try my hardest to refrain my own opinions and interpretation of it, which I do have, and many of you who are my, my, my friends um, know what those opinions are. Um, however, my, my interpretation is really um, comes from a comes from my expertise, which is mathematics. So um, I know a lot of people have a lot of, um, there's a lot of confusion or fuzziness about how these numbers go, are derived and what they mean, especially when we talk about mortality or fatality rates. So I would like to give a brief presentation about this. Hi, my name is Dr. Nancy Che Mahan. This is a presentation about COVID-19 from a mathematical perspective. So when we talk about mortality or fatality rates, which is one of the big numbers that is thrown out there every single day, um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions or um, yeah, confusion about what these numbers mean and therefore um, a, a, an interpretation of opinions are come, coming out of confusion. So here in this lesson, I want to give a basic, basic math lesson, first of all, about what fractions are, because that's what rates are. Rates are fractions where it consists of a part and a whole is a fraction that that is converted in, that is converted to a decimal, and a decimal is then converted to a percentage, and that's where we get the percentages that we hear about every single day. So when we talk about the mortality or fatality rates of the COVID-19, it's a fraction, and the fraction is the number of deaths over the number of cases. So the numerator is the top part of the fraction, and it's the part of the whole, right? So it's the number of deaths uh, from the COVID-19. And the denominator is the whole. It's the whole is looking at number of cases um, of people who are infected with it. So quick clarification, this is not, the mortality rate is not the number of deaths over the number of people in the world. So I hear a lot of confusion of people um, thinking that. So it's the number of cases out of those who, number of deaths out of those who have been infected. So really, it's a probability of um, the chances of someone experiencing, unfortunately experiencing death if they got the coronavirus disease. So let's look at what's currently out there right now. The worldwide mortality rate is, uh, are these numbers here, 193825 deaths in the world over 2. the mathematics of that, you get 0 0.0690 when you plug that into your calculator. And if you move the decimal twice to the right, you make it a percent, which makes it 6.9%. And this is from, this data is from the World Health Organization. Um, furthermore, if you want to take a closer look, um, more home-based at the U United States, we have 52,459 deaths divided by 928,619 cases. We get the decimal 0 0.0565, which when you kind of round it and make it to a decimal, it becomes about 5.6, 5.7% probably to be more exact. And that is from CDC, the Center for Disease Control. And by the way, whatever I present in this PowerPoint, I will always source it. And the source that I give you, you will be, in my opinion, a very reputable course. So the WHO, the CDC, or here's another case, another set of numbers, the John Hopkins um, coronavirus Research Center. So 
um, the John Hopkins Center has a little bit of different numbers, as you can see here. And as you can see, the numbers aren't static. They're constantly changing. There's a little bit of controversy of how they're being calculated so they're not exact. But as you can see, the John Hopkins rates are similar to those of the worldwide rates as well. So 7% for worldwide mortality rates, 5 or 6% for U.S. mortality rate. Now, like I just mentioned, the number one misconception that people are here, the verbiage, and it's actually very dangerous verbiage to say, is when you say that these percentages, 7%, 5 or 6%, saying 7% of people are gonna die from coronavirus in the world, or 5 or 6% of people in the world have died, or in the United States have died. So that is wrong because it's not out of the world. It's out of um, the number of cases of those who are already infected. So again, the mortality rate is not equal to the number of deaths over the population of people. Again, a common area, er, a common error, and an understandable misconception. However, if we want to talk about that, if we want to talk about, well, what if we did calculate it? What is the number of deaths divided by the population of, of people? Because in reality, um, a majority of us are in the category of the population of people, not in the category of those who are infected. So for the majority of us, we are the population of people. So we want to see, you know, what are the chances of me um, dying out of the entire world or out of the entire nation, the entire population? So let's calculate that rate. So the number of people in the world, how many people are in the world? All right, look at it up on Google. It's about 7.6 billion people. So we know the number of deaths based on this numbers from John Hopkins Research Center based on April 26, 2019. Number of people in the world. So we get 0.00002718. And if I change that to a decimal, I get 0.003%. So right now, 0.003% of the people in the world have died of coronavirus. And if you want to take a closer look at the United States, so there's about 331 million people in the United States. Again, these numbers are just based on Google, of the U.S. population, the number of people in the world. Um, there's a 0.00016241 chance, or 0.02%. So there's a 0.02% probability right now, which of people in the United States will um, will die from the coronavirus out of the entire population. So if we want to talk about, if we want to, if we want to talk, if we want to use words to say, hey, out of the people in the world or out of the people in the nation, how many people are experiencing death? I would say the percent right now is 0.02% in the United States, 0.003% in the world. That would be the accurate way of speaking about about this. Now, um, I know numbers are numbers, and sometimes for some people, the numbers just fly overhead and they just look like numbers. And I'm extremely visual, and one of the reasons why I love mathematics is that you can model mathematics in different ways. You can show it through numbers, like I just did, or you could model it through a visualization of a graph. And I chose to use a pie graph to represent percentages, because I think that's the best way to see it and to understand it. So the left-hand corner here of the screen indicates the mortality rate. So again, mortality rate is the rate that people have died from the coronavirus out of those who have been infected by it. So if you have been infected, um, the rate right now indicates a 7% of the people who have been infected have unfortunately passed away from it in the world. And in the United States, it's 5.6%. So again, that data that I just showed you earlier this is the visualization of it. Now, the reason why I like visualizing it in a pie chart, um, rather than just giving out numbers, is because you can see the whole, right? Where here, um, the sliver is the 7%. The sliver is the 5.6%. So well, that's what I would say is a sliver of the truth. And when we only look or focus at 7% or 5.6% and we just look at that, we really forget to look at the whole. And the whole here says that, oh, 93% has had a survival rate in the world. 94.4% have had a survival rate in the United States out of those who have gotten the coronavirus. So again, I love graphs because they give you the whole picture and not just a sliver of it. Now let's look at 
out of the population, right? So um, out of the population, we calculated in the previous screen that 0.003% out of the population of the world has has a chance of um, of experiencing death, and then 0.02% out of people in the United States. And you might be wondering, wait a minute, where is the sliver? Well, you know what? I created these graphs on on Excel, and the sliver is so so small and insignificant that you actually can't see it. So I just want to show you how I did it, so that you know, won't be like, well, she's you know this or that. This is how you create a graph on Excel. You create rows and columns of the of the um, of the category and then of the percentage, and then you right click on certain things and make it look pretty and put colors in it, and that's what it is. So notice these percentage 0 0.003 and 0 0.02. Even Excel says that that's so small and insignificant that it will not even show up on the graph with a common eye, right? So um, this is important because. Um, if I had the coronavirus, if I had it, I would be looking at this left side of the screen because I would be wondering if me or the people that I love or my friends and family have the coronavirus, I'd be concerned about this left column where I'll be like, you know, what, it, what, is, what are my chances based on data and science? What are my chances of surviving or of dying from this coronavirus? Well, here it is. My chances of dying or surviving if I had if I had it. The right side of the screen is what are my chances of dying in general and from the coronavirus in general out of the entire population of the world and of the United States, right? Here are my chances. So when I look at these two graphs, I'm able to respond accordingly um, based on this information. Now let's understand fractions a little bit. Um, the numerator is the death the number of death in the denominator is the number of cases. Every single day, these numbers are shooting up, right? What does that do to the mortality rate? What, let's understand what happens when the numerator increases, what happens? When the denominator increases, what happens? So as the numerator increases, meaning the number of deaths from COVID-19 increases, what happens? Well, here's an example. If you start off with a numerator of three over some random number 10, you calculate it at 30%. If you increase the numerator to five, the, more, the rate increases to 50%. When you increase it to nine, again, it increases to 90%. So as we can see here, as the numerator increases, the rate increases. In other words, as the number of deaths increases, the mortality rate increases. So how about the, new, the denominator? The denominator, the number of cases. Well, as you can see here, if I had the same fraction as here, three over 10, get 30%. If I increase the denominator, meaning three over 20, I get 15%. The 30% drop down to 15. Increase the denominator, three out of 30, I get 10%. So I went from 30 to 15 to 10, it's dropped. So as you can see, as the denominator increases, the rate decreases. In other words, as the number of cases increases, which it does, the mortality rate decreases. So when I watch the news, or actually before I even watch the news, when I look at the numbers at these, on these sites, I just look at the numbers and I do the calculations and I realize, oh, okay, the number of cases increases, actually my mortality rate decreases. So that's actually a good thing. But if the numerator increases, so the number of deaths is increasing at a faster rate than the denominator, then I'm gonna be really worried and I'm going to quarantine the mm, out of myself and my kids and my loved ones and I won't need a law or a mandate to quarantine myself. I'll do it myself because I could look at these numbers and say, wow, the number of deaths is increasing so much higher or the numerator is increasing at a rate so much higher than the denominator. But now it's not the case. The denominator is increasing, lowering the rate, <clears throat> The number of deaths is also increasing, but definitely not as much as the denominator. <clears throat> so what if? What if, because right, um, we do a lot of projections, right? And as we've seen, all the projections that they've had has been way off. Um, and, and of course they say it's way off because we have been quarantining. Well, 
even the projections that said that if we do strict quarantining, um, this is going to be the number of deaths and this is the number of this is and that has been way off as well. So I'm going to do some projections myself. Look at this. Let's see if we double the cases of uh, coronavirus in the United States. If I double it in the denominator, which I think is very realistic, that there's going to be a lot more cases and a lot of cases have been uncounted for it. We're getting more and more tests available. The case is going to shoot up like crazy. Well, what happens if the sh cases shoot up like crazy? Gee wizards, the denominator increases, so the mortality rate decreases. Well, what happens if we increase the deaths? Well, the increase of deaths has not been as, as fast as the cases, so let's increase it by, say, about, you know, about 15,000 or 20,000, right? Well, notice what happens to that. This is what happens to the rate. Um, and I'm, I might have mentioned this earlier already, but I am not in any case um, trying to be callous about these numbers. If my child or, or my loved one was one out of those 53,000 deaths, that would break, that would shatter me, right? So I am not in any case, uh, not in any way downplaying the sadness or the griefs of those who have died or have been affected by the coronavirus um, or have, or no loved ones who have been. That's a very sad thing, whether it's one person dying or thousands of people dying. And whether that's from coronavirus or whether that's from cancer or from a car accident or from this, this or that, death in and of itself is a very sad thing. And I am in no way downplaying or being callous about it when I talk about these numbers. My purpose of talking about these numbers is to understand the numbers so that we can react and respond accordingly rather than looking at um, stories or looking at headlines. So we ourselves can be empowered to do that. So again, it is not an emotional response to, um, to any, of, any of those people who are affected by it. Next, I would like to disaggregate the data and to question the data as well. Um, as a doctorate, as, um, as someone who's gotten her doctorate, I had to write a dissertation, and my dissertation was based on quantitative data, meaning I was looking at numerical information, and I did a causal comparative research. Um, and in all types of dissertations, especially quantitative, we always, in the end of our research or the beginning or whatnot, we always state in our dissertation um, the limitations of the data. Because let's be humble, um, our data is not is not the capital T in truth, right? Um, it's maybe a lowercase t, meaning it's a, you know, it's a picture of the truth, but it's not maybe the whole picture because there could be a lot of limitations or there could be some errors in it. So we have to talk about those errors so that we don't get big headed and think, hey, my data is a shiznit, right? Um, and disaggregating the data, meaning let's tear apart the data. Who is involved in this in this data? And what does it mean? Don't not just look at numbers, but actually tear apart these piece piece by piece the, the data. So in terms of disaggregating the data, um, looking at the numerator first, because the data is the numerator and the denominator, what facts do we know about the numerator? In other words, what are the demographics of the numerator? Who's dying? The number of deaths, what do we know about those who have been dying? Well, these are facts based on the world meters. And these are facts that I don't think anyone would um, would um, argue against because on both sides of the spectrum, people say these are the facts, right? Um, most people uh, right now, based on world meters, 72.3% of death consists of people ages 65 and above, and with a majority of them having underlying conditions. And when we talk about underlying conditions, which means cor they call comorbid medical conditions, things like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, hypertension, and cancer. Those are things that kind of increases your chances of, of dying if you had the coronavirus. People or patients who have had none of these comorbid diseases have had a fatality rate of 0.9%. So about 1% of those who have um, unfortunately died, um, only 1% of them did not have any comorbid, um, comorbid medical conditions. So 1% means that there are people that haven't had other conditions, but again, it's 1%. So I know the news and a lot of social media is really highlighting stories of that 1%, but they need to realize it is 1%. Would anyone like to talk about the 99%? 62% um, of the numerator are male. I don't know what to say about that. 
Um, very few children under the age of nine. Now let's look at the denom denominator. What we looked at the numerator, we got to question the denominator as well. What facts do we know about the denominator? What are the demographics of the denominator? Well, we know that the denominator, this is um, pretty widely known. The denominator is increasing rapidly. The number of cases is increasing every single day uh, and it's geographically widespread. So we see those maps with those big red dots all over the world, right? It's getting bigger and bigger and darker and darker and spreading, right? The virus is contagious and anyone is susceptible to it. Um, RO, or I'm sorry, R naught, that zero on the bottom means R naught, um, stands for reproduction number. Whenever, um, whenever people study a type of a virus or anything that's contagious, they want to know what the reproduction number is. And right now they have a reproduction number based on uh, Forbes.com here that I sourced. Um, the reproduction number of COVID-19 is 5.8 which means if you, someone, one person gets the coronavirus, um, they could spread it to about 5.8 other people. So that's how, how much it's spreading, right? So again, as you can see, the denominator is probably, I mean, the, we know the denominator is, is unbiased. It, it spreads out to anyone and everyone, right? Now let's look at how accurate is it. Again, I mentioned earlier, we got to look at the limitations of data. Like how accurate is it? Are there any things that might make it, um, might make it not very accurate or not very reliable? So let's look at the numerator. How accurate is the numerator? How accurate is the number of COVID-19 deaths? Which deaths count toward the COVID-19 death? Well, based on the CDC, the Center for, um, of Disease Control, um, it has stated that um, people who die with the coronavirus, not necessarily from it, are counted towards the numerator. In other words, if people who have the flu, pneumonia, or comorbid, or cancer, whatever, if they died and they had the coronavirus, they're part of that, that number. So, they're, so that, this is partly why the flu um, death rate has dropped so much ever since this whole coronavirus came came out because now they're including the flu the flu death into the coronavirus death now. And furthermore, the methodology of counting the coronavirus deaths depends state by state, so it's very inconsistent depending on what state you you live in. Um, so as of April 14th, the CDC realized this, like, oh my gosh, all the states are counting it differently. So they came out with a statement on their website on April 14th that said specifically and clarified that the death counts in the numerator both include confirmed and probable cases, meaning unconfirmed cases, cases of people that were never tested, um, but we think they probably had the coronavirus because they lived in an area where there were a lot of people who had the coronavirus, so they probably died from it. So it's presumed infected. So those people are now included in the numerator. And what they, the term that they call it is the epi epidemiologically linked cases. That's what they call it now. Um, and these are now counted as coronavirus deaths. So there are inconsistent counting methods throughout the nation um, that kind of raises questions of how accurate are, is the numerator. And as we can see, the numerator right now is probably super inflated because we're counting almost a bunch of deaths into this numerator. So I think I just gave the answer. I didn't mean to, but as a math teacher, let me ask you guys a math quiz. So the numerator is inflated, so the numerator shoots up in other words, it might be a lot lower in reality, then the mortality rate will be A, will it be higher, or B, will it be lower? Well, if you've been listening thus far, you'll know that as the numerator increases, the mortality rate increases. So since the numerator is inflated, then the mortality rate is probably inflated as well. Now let's look at the denominator, right? So whatever we do top, we do the bottom. Meaning if we're gonna question the top, let's question the bottom as well. How accurate is the number of cases, the counts of them? So we know again, well-known fact that many people exhibit very mild symptoms and therefore are totally unaware that they even have the virus. So they're probably even not part of the count of the denominator. And many people have not been tested because there have not been as many tests available, but that's going to change, right? Hopefully, or I don't know, hopefully, 
or fortunately or unfortunately. Um, so it's almost certain that the denominator is actually way higher than what is currently reported right now because people are not being tested or they have so, such mild symptoms that they even know that they have it. So math quiz, if the denominator is currently deflated, the denominator is so low, is, is a lot, it should be a lot higher, but it's currently deflated, then what happens to the mortality rate? Does it increase or does it decrease? It decreases. It's lower. So if the denominator is currently deflated, meaning it should be higher, then the mortality rate should be lower. So right now, if the denominator shoots up, which it should shoot up, then the mortality rate will actually, thankfully, decrease. So when we question the accuracy and the limitations of data, as all researchers and all people should do, um, we see that for both cases, the morbidity or the fatality rate for rates for COVID-19 out of people who get it is decreased significantly. So when we say 5.6% of the people who are infected of the coronavirus in the United States, it's 5.6% is most likely and probably lower, will be lowered down to 2%. So in other words, if you get the virus, you have a 9.4 to 98% chance of recovering. So that's looking at the whole, not just at a sliver. And again, um, I have this cup here that's either looked at as half empty or half full. When you look at data, you can always look at it from the perspective of half empty or half full. And some people call it optimistic or, pe or pessimistic. I would just say it's a matter of interpretation it's a matter of opinion, it's a matter of your perspective, it's a matter of your background in life um, and your MO, um, how, you, um, how you see things. But in order, to, um, in order to make that assessment, it's really important to understand the data before you make that assessment. So this is the reason why I created this video to help my friends and family and the general public understand these, the mathematical perspective and then each of us can come to our own opinions and our own reactions um, to this coronavirus. So again, this is really, when we look at this, we can see a cup as half empty or half full. And it's really up to each person to interpret the data and perceive this cup or perceive this information in the way that they would like to perceive it. Uh, my exhortation to um, my friends and family and to the general public is that when you look, um, when you're curious about what's going on and you want to be informed about what's going on um, based on data and based on science, look at the data first. And if you don't know how to look into the data or you don't understand what the data means, then find out. And that's what this video is about. Um, look at the data first, run the data, come to your own interpretation, come to your own um, understanding from the data, check it to make sure your understanding is right, and then go on social media or the news, or whatever, and listen to other people's interpretations or opinions of it. Because if you don't have your own opinion or your own interpretation, or your own critical thinking thoughts about it, you're gonna be so susceptible to all of the headlines, all of the controversial information, all the controversial, the heated debate, this person says that, well, this headline says that, well, this, 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 and you're gonna be, you're gonna be a very, very susceptible, your heartstrings are gonna be so susceptible to the news that is the loudest, the one that creates the most ratings, um, the stories that are the most sad, the visual images that are the most extreme, because you're gonna be susceptible to that because you actually didn't have anything to ground yourself on before you look at all that. Um, you have all those influence your opinions about things like stories and whatnot. And again, um, it did, and I'll just say as a disclaimer, which I should have said in the beginning, is that this is not at all. Um, let me actually use. Um, this is not at all um, trying to um, to callously look at numbers without looking at people's stories or their experiences. Because I'm sure if a person who lost their loved one and were part of that. Um, that were part of that 5.6% of people who got it and, 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 and died from it. Like that's, 
no matter how small that sliver is, that is very significant to them. So again, this presentation is not to minimize or to be callous towards death or those who have lost people or are experiencing death. And whether it's COVID-19 or cancer or a car accident or anything, um, this is simply a presentation to really talk about the facts and the science behind it so that we can um, really talk about our response and our interpretation of it based on the understanding of the mathematics. So I hope this was helpful. And if you know, if you don't agree with it, it's really you're not agreeing to mathematics, really, in terms of what I just presented. If um, I try to reframe my interpretation and my opinions about it, but it might have leaked out here and there because when I talk about data, it's hard not to interpret it at the same time. So I apologize. I ended up doing a little bit of that. Um, I will do a lot more of my interpretation, my opinions about the data in another video for those who would like to see it. And I'm sure this is up. So be well, love you guys, be kind. Talk to you later.